All right, in typical animation, an animator lays out their key poses first and fills in the gaps later. The problem with this is the motion always appears like it's trying to arrive somewhere with arms and legs just like landing on a pose all at once. With really great in-betweening work and meticulous planning, you can obfuscate these key poses, but most of the time in anime you see stuff like this. This is somewhat typical animation from the 80s era. It's, it's decent, but you can tell where the keys are, right? It's easy. And in this next clip, this next clip borrows more from the Disney school of animation with its very smooth arcs of motion. In a way, the characters look like they're having their strings pulled rather than moving with their own energy. There's an animation legend who threw this practice out the window and said, I'm gonna do it my way. Every single drawing will be a keyframe and there will be no in-betweening work. I'm gonna do it all myself so that every part can move with the freedom of not having to arrive at poses all at once or have every motion be this buttery smooth arc. And this man animated a couple of the most legendary battle scenes in modern anime. Here's one of them. Spoilers. <laughs> That was from animator Mitsuo Iso. When you watch the entire series, Iso's part really sticks out because suddenly the mecha are imbued with weight and momentum. That weightless and jittery feel common to anime is gone and every blow carries the force of a thousand tons. Here's the same mecha animated by somebody else. This is from uh, Yoyo Shinari, who animated some of Studio Gainax's greatest scenes. Uh, he drew this piece, but his work is very comic booky compared to the exaggerated realism of Mitsuo Iso. The Evangelion does this ninja run here, and the key, and the key poses really stick out. Boom, boom, bam. Iso calls his style full limited because he's trying to convey sophisticated motion while animating on the twos and threes. His animation is both jerky but very rich and full of movement, with many parts moving in separate directions and oscillating with their own motion. Here's the last clip I'm going to show you. Only Iso can make fiddling with an assault rifle really interesting to look at. I think I could make fiddling with an assault rifle pretty interesting to look at. <laughs> yeah, let me show you. Yeah, it's, it's the original Ghost in the Shell film from 1995, I think. 95, yeah. yeah. how the spider mech uses its body to control its time. Really, really good cool. effects on the There's a legend that says Iso captured a spider in a glass and studied how it walked in order to animate the mecha. That's the sort of thing that animators have to think about. Here's a bit that Iso did for the old Kenshin opening. Iso was a very influential animator throughout the 90s, and you'll see his language of animation in much of the new generation. New generation would be me. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to talk to you about a really new guy. Uh, this is uh, Yoshimichi Kameda.